Hi, welcome to Five Good Thoughts. Glad you could join us today. We welcome Reverend Dr. Mayor Michael Evans. Uh, Michael, we're so glad you could join us today. It's good to be here, and uh, th that's too many titles for a sane person. <laughs> well, I, I prefer the title friend uh, as, as, I, as we talk. Uh, Hey. Uh, you know, honestly, as, as we tackle five good thoughts on, on political discourse, I could think of nobody better uh, for this conversation to help lead us through uh, some thoughts. It's on, you know, it's, it's in the zeitgeist. It's everywhere we go, this kind of uh, place we're living right now. It's a difficult conversation to have. So excited to, to have it with us. So begin with number five, five good thoughts on political discourse. Sure. You know what? I think number five would be um, th there's a need for people who are uh, talking to each other, discussing things, I think, to be secure uh, or comfortable, rather, in their own skin, uh, which helps people to understand that you don't need to be the smartest person in the room. So I, I, think, I think you would start there uh, with your own awareness of self your own voice, hearing, knowing your own voice, and that you don't need to drown out others in order for your uh, particular opinion to be to be heard all the time. Yeah, so how, how do I know myself better? Give me some, what, what are something I can do to make sure that I am secure uh, in myself before I begin having these conversations? So, you know, that's a, that's a fine question. How do, how do I know myself better? One is, um, I, I, I came to grips with uh, my, my genogram, for example, you know, as I, as I lay out and look at uh, who makes up my family, who are those persons uh, that were my examples uh, for, for good, as well as for not so good, you know, and looking at that, seeing what that looked like in my family tree, and then uh, coming to, to grips with my own tendencies. You know, what are my levels of sensitivity and why am I sensitive to, to this as opposed to that uh, language, names, titles, labels? You know, I think that's important uh, for uh, getting to know yourself. That family of origin, you know, what filters are you actually operating uh, through? I mean, we all have them. You know, you have certain sensitivities, Jack, that I would not necessarily have and then vice versa. So it's, it's being familiar with with who that other person is, that one that's looking at you uh, in, in the mirror. You know, what, what are your blemishes? What are your, you know, where are your nicks and cuts at? And, and what are those areas that need to be covered and protected in regard to your personality, uh, uh, your likes, your dislikes, uh, and, and, and coming to know what that is. You know, even, even, even uh, recognizing what your unconscious biases might be, uh, because we all have them. I do, we do. We all have them. So I think things like that, that helps a person to be uh, more comfortable in their skin, know who you are, know where you're coming from, and, and why do you need to be so passionate about said issue or thing? That's really good. That's helpful to think about. I, I, I read that in, in Jamar Tisby's book, is that kind of being step one of how to fight racism. But it yeah. is, it's a wonderful perspective to this is a broader scope kind of conversation to know thyself, right? There's something to that. Right, it is. It is. So number four, keep us going. Uh, number four would be um, uh, uh, respect for, have respect for alternative views. You know, again, uh, people are coming from different places. Um, if it's, if it's a, a racial, a ethnic divide, um, that might be one place. Uh, an ideological divide, uh, you know, again, uh, that can be another, but, but have respect uh, for uh, alternative views. It, it may not be, you know, in your wheelhouse to uh, give an opinion on, uh, on women's rights, you know, if you're not a female. You know, all you can do is kind of lean in on uh, what uh, uh, you believe or have heard others say. So, so those alternative views, I think it's good to have uh, a, a, a diverse uh, thought patterns around the table, because in my mind, it helps you to come up uh, with, a, with, with goals, with uh, those smart goals, things that are, that are reasonable, things that be, can be worked on, and uh, it gets you further along 
I was just in a conversation with someone two days, matter of fact, about 30 minutes ago in a meeting that I was in, and uh, uh, we were talking about the importance of, and, you know, and now people have politicized this, the importance of uh, diverse voices and the importance of uh, being inclusive of other of, of others and other viewpoints. It may not even be a Western uh, uh, thought pattern, culturally speaking, but um, I, I think that's important and respect that and, and really celebrate that, celebrate the diversity that's in the room, that's in the mix. That's great. Get us out of our echo chambers, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Number three. Uh, a compromise, a compromise is a viable option for outcome. Uh, it, it should not be my way or the highway. You know, something's wrong with that. I mean, it, you know, it's kind of a, I call it a, a spoiled brat mentality. You know, if it doesn't go my way, I'm going to pick up my proverbial books and, or, or, you know, uh, my marbles and go home. Uh, yeah. So, I think that when you enter into these kind of conversations or discourse, that you would you should recognize or understand that uh, you may not get everything that you want, so to speak, whatever that is. But um, you know, work with find those those commonalities and work from there. Compromise is hard. I have to give up something. Uh, That's true. So. Yeah. How do I begin? And, and I think this is where a lot of, of our people in the pew are, or maybe people in, even in, you know, at, at the city council or, or school council meetings. How do I begin to open up my hands when cultural forces are telling me to ball up my fists and fight? Yeah, you, you know, you're right about that. And unfortunately, that's where we are now. I'm, I'm praying to God that uh, this is cyclical, you know, that and at some point, uh, uh, cooler uh, heads will prevail. But um, this is not unlike anything that we have, uh, you know, not ever seen in regard to uh, our country. I mean, we have those periods, you know, you have your ups and downs, your ebbs and your flows. Uh, and uh, there are those times that we are most divided, but also those times when we are, are more united. And um, God uh, has a way of uh, facilitating and making that happen, doesn't he? Uh, just through uh, current events. I mean, uh, you know, here we are dealing uh, with, uh, I think on a global scale, just the horror of the uh, Ukrainian crisis. And it was it was one that was contrived by uh, the Russians. And uh, people have a heart for the oppressed. People have a heart for those persons who are being bullied. People have a heart for that. And it's interesting how uh, we're seeing a, 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 I, I think, common sentiment on, you know, when you are looking at the basics of right and wrong uh, from, from, from the left uh, side of, of a given political ideology, as well as the right side, you know, whereas these are things that we can agree upon. And, you know, guess what? Uh, we're going to work toward a common cause, uh, work toward making that stuff uh, right and happen. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's, I think that's important. Yeah, that's a great example to use. Uh, Derek Thompson, in his podcast, Plain English, talks about um, Putin banking on a, a, a fractured West. And yes. that we, we are so fractured that, but actually, in the situation of right and wrong, we coalesced yes. and came together. Um, there seems like there's some, some lessons to be learned from that kind of idea. Um, where we can, there's more power in coming together, um, especially when we're looking at places of, uh, of oppression and hurt and pain and suffering. Down and down. And, you know, and, and actually, you know, speaking of that, it, it helps me to segue into what would be my number two. And, and that would be uh, uh, agree upon and uh, discover, find, look for uh, that, 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 that common denominator. What what what's the what's our common cause here? Where, where are we trying to go? Uh, I do believe I do believe that when it comes to governing, uh, that uh, most of us uh, in in society, the in the American society, most of us find ourselves in the middle, as opposed to uh, the two ideological extremes. I really believe it. I I, I believe that that most folks. Um, they, they have a, a common cause. Uh, for example, 
I, I serve uh, here in Mansfield, Texas. Uh, the electorate is predominantly white. And, and of course, I'm not, you know, uh, so, so, so what, what did you run on? You know, people ask me all the time, Jack, they said, well, how does it feel, you know, to be the first black mayor in the city of Mansfield? I said, well, you know, it, it, I feel all right. It's a blessing, you know, but, but that wasn't one of the planks, you know, in my platform, vote for me because I'm a black guy. No, vote for me because we agree together that we should have uh, safety and security in our city and that we should work to make sure that that happens uh, by taking care of our, our law enforcement uh, uh, officers as well as our first responders. Can we agree on that together? Yes. The other is uh, we want to, to be sure that uh, we have good infrastructure, you know, and I'm just giving you examples. You know, everybody wants uh, uh, streets that don't have potholes in them and that they're wide enough to accommodate traffic. I mean, things like that. You want a good you want a good uh, uh, educational system. You know, again, these are just basics. These are things that we agree on. And guess what? They're neither Protestant nor Catholic. They're neither Democrat nor Republican, but they are, are, are human uh, needs, things that we have agreed upon together as, as human beings that we want to see taken care of, enhanced, uh, you, you understand, or given attention to. That is why I believe that I was elected to this office because people trusted uh, based upon uh, my history here in Mansfield, as well as I pray to God, my, my, my character uh, that is guided by the moral, my moral compass, which I believe is, is guided by my Christianity. That's what we have. And I think that when you agree that these are the things that we are going to work toward uh, as a team, as a group, uh, it benefits everybody. So, so that in itself, I think, helps to promote a civil discourse. That's really good. I, I heard something there, and, and maybe you want to dig into this a little bit, but there seems to be maybe a, a call to reject some of the labels that we might put on ourselves um, in order to have maybe a little more uh, issue discussion. Would, was that a fair statement? I, I think you're 100% correct. Here's the blessing in serving uh, as a mayor or uh, also as a member of the school board. These are nonpartisan in Texas. All right. Now, there are people who want to, you know, I mean, they fought hard through the legislature to attach a D or R or I or whatever you want to be, you know, Democrat, Republican, Independent, or, you know, John from Mars, you know, uh, but but when people ask me that question, they say, who are you? And, and I say, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. You, really? Now, you got to know that that bothers some people, you know, uh, because because of given stances that I take. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a, a, a right to life guy, you know, well, OK, well, may, well, that maybe that puts you over here. Yeah, I'm a right to life, uh, 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 eternal life, uh, um, the, the unborn life. And, and also, you know, I have given views regarding uh, um, capital punishment, you know, uh, you know, so so things like that. Again, you are right. I think when you, we remove the labels and we see people as as the human beings that they are, the basic needs, then uh, we can feel those and we can work together as a unit in order to uh, make people's lives uh, much better. But uh, yeah, I mean, but we label everything, don't we? It's you know, and we really need to be careful about about doing that. That's right. That's right. I really believe that. I really do. Well, lay it on us. Number one, uh, five good thoughts. Sure. Set ground rules for the discussion. Set ground rules you, before you before you even uh, talk about a said subject or topic. What are the ground rules here? You know, and and I think that that kind of ties up in a bow everything else that you've heard because when you set the ground rules, that is that uh, we're going to respect. Uh, the the opinions of others here setting the ground rules we're going to you know understand that uh, your idea does not have to be the the dominant idea and just because you talk the longest and maybe even the loudest uh, that uh, you know you, you got to know that it's not about you the individual and when you set ground rules you also know that you're not going to get everything that you want in this discussion. And, and, and compromise is king here. Compromise is exactly what we are going for in regard to uh, setting goals and getting things done. I think when you do those kinds of things and you set ground rules like that, 
that it, 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 it sets the stage for civil discourse. And uh, guess what? I believe that when the discussion is over, you can shake hands, you know, or whatever we're doing, this is almost post COVID environment, you know, but you give a high five or touch your heart or something, yeah. and then you can depart and be okay. And I think also, Jack, that it helps to set, uh, or excuse me, it helps to build relationships. I think the, 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 the more that you know a person, you know, the, the, the least likely you are uh, to, uh, to holler, scream at them or to hate them. Mm. I, I believe that in my spirit. So um, to me, that's how you do it. That's really good. I appreciate that. Uh, that's such a helpful thought. Um, I, 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 I'm so deeply appreciative of your time and, and given to us today. Uh, I failed to note your pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church there in Mansfield that's doing just incredible works uh, in and among people. And, and um, man, we're just so deeply appreciative of who you are and the work you're doing on so many fronts and taking time out to visit with us today. Uh, thank you again, Pastor. I appreciate it, Jack. And ultimately, we are all in this together. It's about saving the laws. Amen. Amen. We'll talk again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being here for five good thoughts on political discourse. We look forward to seeing you again very soon.